So this episode, unfortunately, we did have audio issues. So uh, please bear with us and happy holidays. Footloose, footloose, kick off your Sunday shoes. Ooh-wee. I'm Steph. And I'm Ange. We're Nerdazons. second time we've um sung in an intro getting pretty good at this oh this is actually technically the third time well like don't (laughs) quote us on no me the third time because me and edge i mean me and maz i think we did a singing intro for suspiria yeah i think we did a queen song oh i I sing way too much for somebody who cannot sing (laughs) yeah my mum tells me that all the time (laughs) i think we should just keep doing it yeah let stuff the haters let let them hate don't That's hate right. us because you're anxious. Makes you happy. Let's do it. Yep. Okay. So this month we're obviously doing Footloose. <laughs> um, <laughs> so no surprises away. there. So because of um, stupid, stupid, stupid COVID, mm. unfortunately we can't do Death on the Nile. Um, I mean, we could have we could have done the book to the original, but I really, really, really wanted to see have, the new one. Yeah, we didn't have. I don't think enough time. No. Nah. But so right. because of that, it's now gone back to my choice, which is one of my all-time favourites, Footloose. So this one actually came up because I've recently moved house, going through my DVDs, and I remember that my sister gave me, for one of my birthdays, a whole bunch of classic DVDs that we used to be obsessed about. So there was Footloose, there was um, Dirty Dancing, there was Beavers and Butthead Do America, there Love was um, Double Team with uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme and Dennis, Dennis Rodman. Oh my God. <laughs> and then there was also um, double, uh, not double team, um, Drop Zone as well. <gasps> oh my God, you need to see these movies. And then there was also like True Lies. Love that. So I, I was like, oh my God, yes. I think we have to do Footloose yes. because if you haven't seen it, how dare you have I not know. seen it? How can you sing along to the song and not know? <laughs> Rude. (laughs) So that's my choice for the year. All right. So Footloose, 1984. A city teenager moves to a small town where rock music and dancing have been banned and his rebellious spirit shakes up the populace. So, um, oh my God, I totally did not even remember that Sarah Jessica Parker's in this movie. She was such a good dancer in the movie. Like one of my favorite 80s dance films is Girls Just Want to Have Fun. I think I've watched that and listened to the soundtrack over a hundred times. I've never seen it. I still have it on VHS. No way. <laughs> Do you even have a VHS player? No. I My mum does. Really good. I think I have one still connected to, you know, the old little TV yep. that I had one. But the, the problem is, is I'm too scared to use it because you can't get video mm-hmm. head cleaners anymore. Mm-hmm. So for all those youngins, it's where you had liquid that you put in a tape to clean the head of like, or the, the, to clean the player so you can put a new, the tape back in. And without that, I know. you ruined your, your VHS. And then the fact that, you know, I hate that you had to rewind it and all yeah, that, like, you had to be like, stop, pause, hold on, they didn't rewind it. Don't look, don't look, I'm rewinding yeah. it. Uh, oh, I hated that when my brothers or sisters would just like put it back into the, DVD, like into the case and then it's like oh now i've got to rewind it and wait five minutes for this but one rewind. good thing what is about it you could always fast forward the ads that is true yes that is true going back to this movie i used to watch it a lot and then um recently watching it for the podcast the first thing i thought of when Ren's or kevin bacon's character got to town was you're in a cult get out you're in a cult it had a children of the corn vibe totes yeah I and i was just like um Okay, get out while you can. Yeah. <laughs> but I adore this movie. Mm. The dancing is just incredible. It's phenomenal. Me like, and my sister tried to learn the last the last dance, the line <laughs> dancing dance because we're from the country and we failed. I know it, it's uh, there's something about 80s dance that I really love and it's um and if you watch all of them like flash dance um, That was the other one that came in my D, in my back box of DVDs, well, flash dance. You have to have a dance night, I think. Um, and I'm going to make you watch Girls Just Want to Have Fun, but oh, it's really almost acrobatic and gymnastic vibes to that dancing. And I really love that about 80s films. Mm-hmm. Even if you look at um, the dance scene in Earth Girls Are Easy, it's really oh, different. It's just such a different dance style, and I really love that. And I don't think 
unless you were doing an 80s style film of dance, I don't think you could ever really recreate that and have it sort of seem normal. It's very different to what we have now, but I love that about 80s dance films. Yeah. Also, Kevin Bacon, sorry, he's a babe. Nah. Ah. Oh. Nah. Ah. Oh. And one of his first, did you know one of his first films was um, one of the Friday the 13th? No. Yeah. Wow. I mean, he died. Spoiler alert. Oh. <laughs> we should watch it. Yes. This movie is also about Ren, who falls in love with the preacher's daughter. He also has the usual standard showdown with the locals, including the high school bully. Mm -hmm. Ren decides what his town needs is a dance. Win the approval of the preacher and the town council and allow dancing. Beat up the bully, star in at least three segments of the movie that can be used as TV music videos. One thing that I don't understand about this movie is that with the preacher's daughter, mm -hmm. Ariel, yep. she's a total bitch towards him. She, I think, is just like that to anyone. And that, that she plays a bitch really well. Yeah, yeah. Her ex-boyfriend is a total douche as well. But then I don't, I, like, at no point do I feel like that they, Ren and Ariel, kind of mm -hmm. like each other. Yeah, I, I do agree with that there. Like, I think... I think the connection is because she acted incredibly well as a troubled teen. Like they were both outcasts. Yeah, together. and I think that's what like I think you could see that about her and that's one thing I really like about this one. I think each actor and actress they had they did up their roles really really mm, well and mm. she she seemed like someone who was going through stuff. She didn't seem mentally stable, you know, depression, anxiety. She really showed that and i could see that in her and to me it would like i'd want to be able to help her but no one at that time in 1984 felt comfortable going to people saying hey are you okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i think he could see that about her and he also was uh like i think he could almost see the vibe that she was alone mm -hmm. even though she was around people but mm -hmm. he was actually alone because he's yeah. in a new town and i think that's why he was drawn to her but she was a cow. Yeah. At first. Even like... Sarah even... Jessica Parker's character was so cute. And I'm like, why couldn't he choose her? But then know, when he went... Sweetie. When she went with... Um, I like that though. They were so adorable. Willard. Is it Willard? Yeah, Willard. Willard's the guy. Oh my God, is that Chris Penn? Chris Penn's... Oh my God, Chris Penn is Willard. I didn't know that. Yeah. I just always was like, you're familiar. But I haven't got around to searching who you are. <laughs> yeah, no, that... Wow. Okay, yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah, that makes sense now. Yeah, oh, like re-watching it recently, I was like, oh my God, that's Sarah Jessica Parker. That just blew my mind. And then John Lithgow, he plays creepy well he, and just a horrible person. But he did like, um, what's how, how would I explain this? He played someone who looked like they were losing control of mm -hmm. the situation. Mm -hmm. Like the little fractures of stress that come through or the little elements of your anger and feelings that... You're trying to control a situation, but you can realize, oh no, I'm losing control of the kids here. I have like, and you can like see he did that well, and he did it well in not a I need to control them, well as in a I need to protect them. Mm -hmm. And he was outstanding. And I think having Diane West next to him was a really good balance because mm -hmm. she is such a I don't know, she's so calming. And she's so like, even in Edward Scissorhands, she has like mm -hmm. that soft voice and a soft oh, I love that movie. demeanor about her. And I just think they balanced well. Mm -hmm. And she was a good um, support act to mm -hmm. him and mm -hmm. the journey that he has to mm -hmm. go through. And I love the fact that even in the 80s, when Ren meets Willard, that Willard makes a derogatory comment. And then Ren's like, no, only like horrible people say that comment. Yeah. And I was like, 1984, that's that's awesome. Yeah. Great. I like that. Yeah. And I like how easily that they kind of became friends. Mm -hmm. You know, he wasn't this outcast kid and he had at least someone there on his mm -hmm. side, which I really liked as well. And I think, I don't know, but the, I have to say, like the, the Middle America accents in this were great. Yeah. They were believable. I agree. I agree. They weren't over agree. the top. We knew that they were from Middle America. They weren't just taking the mickey out of it. Yeah, like it wasn't so over the top that it seemed really fake. Like and it seemed yeah. like, hey, you're there in yeah. that little town. And I loved the car race scene 
when they uh, sorry oh, the, 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 chicken the, the chicken scene when yeah. they do it on tractors and they're on tractors in this yeah. one so that's a big difference between the two we'll get into that yeah and like I just I just love this movie it makes me so happy did you know that this was actually based off of a real town in America? no I forget the name of it I think it's not just E when I was reading mm-hmm. it my mistake i should have actually made my notes this time but yes i do remember reading it and it was based in a real town but the the it was outlawed back in like the 1800s so it it just obviously carried through until yeah a senior year wanted to go to um in america they call it prom for us we would have a a a Mm -hmm. formal Mm -hmm. um and they wanted to dance and they actually petitioned to have it removed so it's not that there was a uh, an accident it was just it was there from Mm -hmm. A very long time wow. ago. Wow. Yeah. And parts of the US, you can't buy, al- like especially in the middle America, you can't buy alcohol on a Sunday. That's crazy. Is that real? That's real. I thought that was fake. I wonder if that's still around from like Prohibition days or something. Uh, no, it's because the oh, Sabbath. Religious? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No comment there. Can't buy stuff from Dan at all together. Uh, I know. I just, yeah, I, I, I just... Everything about this movie is just great. Yeah, I love the the last dance scene when he's uh, the dance scene when he's in the is in the shed. I'm just like, oh, Kevin Bacon. Mm-hmm. Yep. I really loved him. Okay, one movie I absolutely love Kevin Bacon in is um, I think it's called. Oh, I haven't watched this for years. Don't quote me. I think it's called The River Wild. It has Meryl mm-hmm. Streep in it, and mm-hmm. it, he's like because you bank. love Meryl Streep. I love Meryl Streep. Mm-hmm. I really do. And it was um, she was a white water rafter like mm-hmm. and a professional and um he was a thief and he to escape with the money is they had the white water raft down like this thing and yeah so she he like um hijacked her family's trip <gasps> this yeah. sounds like a great it movie it was really really good it was cool because he was bad mm-hmm. and it was it was interesting to see that element of him because mm-hmm. like i don't ever really see him in these types of roles mm-hmm. but yeah I, I strongly recommend that i think it's called the river wild okay but um look at that it was a good one are you aware of six degrees of kevin bacon no that sounds weird you've never heard of six degrees of kevin bacon no is it a film no it's literally every single actor you name one and that there's at least six degrees or less between that actor and kevin bacon Wow, how many things has he been involved in? He's been involved in... <clears throat> so in other words, it's like someone's acted with someone who's acted with him. Yeah. And so Kevin Bacon has been in uh, 256 things. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so the Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon it, on Wikipedia, it's saying that the Bacon number is the actor... Sorry. The Bacon number of an actor is the number of degrees of separation between he or she from Kevin Bacon as defined by the game. This is an application of the Eteros number, a concept that Hollywood movie industry. The higher the Bacon number, the greater of separation from Kevin Bacon to the actor. For example, Elvis Presley was in Change of Habit 1969 with Edward Anser. Edward Anser was in JFK 1991 with Kevin Bacon. Therefore, Answer has a Bacon number of one, and Presley, who never appeared with a film with Bacon, has a Bacon number of two. Wow. Now I want to go and do the math. Yeah. <laughs> and so, work it all out. Here we go. Ian McKellen was in X-Men Days of Future Past 2014 with Michael Fassbender and James McAvoy. McAvoy and Fassbender were in X-Men First Class with Kevin Bacon. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. I never knew about that. Yeah. So I just, I love the six degrees of wow. Kevin Bacon. Yeah. I'm, my mind is blown. You know, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yeah. You know, um, Wunch, Wench, Wunch. Yes. That's Kevin Bacon's wife. <gasps> no. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I had no idea. I'm having Wunch. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I'm shook. Yep. Okay. That's my mind is blown. Okay. Yep. Uh, I do, I'm going to jump back to the, mm-hmm. we're going to move past this because I'm, I'm just like, I'm out of words. I just, mm-hmm. I don't know. Anyway. Okay. Um, I do want to mention one pivotal thing. I think that worked with this film is the car accident wasn't really revealed until mm-hmm. a lot later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
um, as opposed to the next mm -hmm. one, which we'll go over. And I actually think this this element was really good in the character development of um, the Reverend. Mm -hmm. Because it, as he was breaking and losing control, you understand why he was like that. And then mm -hmm. why it's the same for Ariel as well. You kind of understand her trauma and why she is like she is mm -hmm. because of that car mm -hmm. accident. And I think that that was a really good, like it helped you as a reader kind of feel like you were there as well. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. wonder why, like you were in Ren's position. Mm -hmm. Like, why is it Ren so weird? And then you discover it as he discovers it. Mm -hmm. and I, I thought that was a good vibe for this one yeah and i love uh, i keep going back to it but it's a dance movie i like the fact of it when they go to the club and um ren's like come on go dance and he's like no 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 and then sarah jessica's parker's character is like you know what stuff you i'm a strong independent woman i'm gonna yes. go dance by myself I'm like yes you go sister yeah yes. and then yep yeah. I do have to say though one really good camera shot that they did with this one and i think it really changed um, the way you would film dance is um, they did the camera angles of the feet mm -hmm. alone and you watch the dance steps. Mm -hmm. I think they did that in a few different scenes and I think that was, it was game changing. Absolutely. And I like the fact at the end when they were doing the dance scene and then they had like balloons, looked like balloons in the cameras. Oh, so yeah, the, yeah, the lights yeah. looked like that and that was really cute. And, and it just added like a vibe of like a, a party vibe. Yeah. 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 I really like this film. Same. How many movie reels would you give this one? Four and a half out of five. I, I would give it four and a half. I think it had a strong story. Mm -hmm. It had um, great music and mm -hmm. amazing soundtrack mm -hmm. and dance, like choreography that went with it. It mm -hmm. wasn't over the top. It wasn't, no. um, it wasn't too little. Like you can count it as a musical and a dance flick. I think it worked well. Like the acting was strong. Yes. Character developments were strong. Story was strong. So I'd give it 4.5. Absolutely. Um, what do you think this one got on Rotten Tomatoes? Okay, being that it's a classic, I'm going to go 89. But bow way lower. <gasps> Are you for real? I am for real. 62. Way lower. <gasps> what? Would you like me to reveal it? Yes. 52. <gasps> no. Yep. But this is such a classic. I Everyone know. watches this. I know. How did that? Well, like, what? I know. They are way off on oh. their tomato meter. Yeah, how dare they? How dare you rotten tomatoes wow. deceive us like this? As you would say, I'm shook it. But the audience score is 71%. Yeah, I, I knew that it was strong with like, mm -hmm. audience members. I, when I was looking at it, I'm like, oh, I'm going to use Luke's idea, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. No. Wow. Luke, you failed us this time. Unless, like, unless, like, the critics who did judge it were really, really nitpicking at things that we wouldn't be aware mm. as of filmmakers, we're just, you know, mm. film enthusiasts. Mm. We never studied it. So unless there are things that we don't know. I'm a film connoisseur. <laughs> I like that. It <laughs> makes us sound smart. Um, but, wow, that's disappointing. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. But it gives me a bit of a vibe of what to say for the next one. Oh, I have so much to say about I the next one. I have a lot to say too, and I have a feeling we're going to be on a very different page. Really? I do get that feeling. Really? I think so. Shall we move huh. on to the next one? Yes. All right. All right, so uh, we're doing, obviously, Footloose from 2000 and. 11. I was going to say 2001 and I'm like, mm. I was watching it and I'm like, no. Okay, so the synopsis for this one is city, city teenager Ren McCorrick moved to a small town where rock music and dancing have been banned and his rebellious spike shakes the populace. That pretty much sounds like exactly the same. same one. Where do I begin with this one? Yeah, I knew we were on a different page. I hated this one. Okay. I hated it with a passion. Okay. So this movie, first of all, I have to say that Miles Teller, who was Willard, was terrible. His accent was terrible. I was just like, why? I, and even like, okay, so Kenny Wormald is Wren. I didn't understand where his accent came from either. It was like, I'm from the city. No, I'm, I'm drawling out my words. Like he just, I hated it. And I hated Andy McDowell in this one. I hated Dennis Quaid. Even like what? Even Julianne Hugh, who was Ariel, I could not stand her. I was just like, okay. "You're a bitch. I don't like you in the slightest." Okay. Um, I hated that they changed it from 
tractor. tractor to a bus. Like, where are you going to get buses from and how do they have buses? Like, And then it was literally word for word was comparison to the original and I did not like it. Although I was watching a a interview with Kenny Wormold, 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 sorry, um, who played Ren and that he was saying that he was a massive fan of the movie and that he liked the dance scene in the original and he's like, that was my ultimate dream to be able to do that. And he said, I like the fact that I stuffed up sometimes and it and I got back on my feet because it proves that I'm doing it by myself. I'm going to make mistakes. Whereas the original, it was just absolutely perfect and he didn't make any errors. Okay. So my... Can I... And I did not, in the slightest, like um, Rusty, Zaya Colon. Did not like her at all. Go. Okay. So... When I first saw the trailer, which I think we were talking about prior, mm. is you didn't know this was a remake. I knew that this was a remake. Mm -hmm. And from the very beginning, I had like a point to expectation of this. Mm -hmm. When I watched it, it actually wasn't as bad as I thought. I actually would give it like a 2.5. So it, it has increased Spoilers, to what I thought. She's uh, already given her review. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't mm. know. I think now that I think about it, my review might be different. But that's what I thought when I mm. watched it. It was a remake, and they kept enough of the elements to be able to still call it Footloose, but I think they made changes to modernise it, but not be over the top, but changing it. So you know how when we watch things like Psycho, Psycho was done spit by spit, mm -hmm. and it was horrid, mm -hmm. because they didn't do any little mm -hmm. changes, mm -hmm. but then there are some that change it too much, and you can't say that this is still the film. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think this was done in a way that it still kept... Footloose, but it did its own change. I actually really liked mm -hmm. that it went more country than rock. Mm -hmm. And like, because when you think about it, it is a backwards country town mm -hmm. that they're supposed to be in. And mm -hmm. I think that vibe is really, really good. I liked the elements of Derby because, I mean, if you've got all that space, man, why wouldn't you do stuff like that with your cars and trucks? And But I also like... I and it's modern. You've got to think it's, it's, no, it's not in the 80s anymore, so you do have to push it yeah. up. The yeah. only thing I disliked about this like, well, there's a few things, but mm. one thing that I really strongly disliked is they did over-sexualize Ariel. Yes. Like, that was her, her like, way of acting out. Whereas mm -hmm. in the other one, she was just... Dancing. She was and... just floating around. She yeah. didn't know what to do. And Whereas this one, they went that angle. And that's what I liked about the original was that they didn't overly, over, overly sexualize it and that they only kissed at the very end, you know? Yeah. There wasn't... And it was still a bit PG. Yeah. yeah but... This one, like, I hated the fact that they kept the same car, the the, the yellow beetle. Like, I mean, to me, I, I don't think that's bad because if you, even if you were to go traveling through Australia, mm. like, when you go past a lot of people who have properties, what are you gonna find? You're gonna find yeah. beat up cars and old, old cars there. Mm. Like, the further out of the city you go, the yeah. less likely you're gonna see newer cars and yeah. models. And I like that because it shows, you know, if you can fix it, you can use it, and that's what I think would happen with most country towns. And and I liked those elements of mm -hmm. it. Like, like I, I feel like they kept enough of the story, but they didn't. Like it wasn't uh, like the. I think what surprised me the most is it was a remake, but they didn't do shot for shot. But at the same time, they brought something new, yeah. and it wasn't a bad mm -hmm. like addition to it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like oh that didn't work. It was like oh, okay, I can see that. So. Mm -hmm. That's where I thought this wasn't bad. Um, I really, really liked. Um, I don't. I forget the actor's name, but I really liked the young boy who played Ren. Do you know he was actually recommended from Justin Timberlake? He was one of his backup dancers. Was he? And he is a like professional in gymnastics, which was cool because I liked seeing when he was in the yeah. warehouse and he did the flips and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't just dance, and it was mm -hmm. like, yeah, you have got that. Like you're actually trained in it, and I think Ariel, the girl who played Ariel. Her and her brother had both been on stage doing Footloose. Mm -hmm. So they were connected to the film in some way, mm -hmm. I liked. But yeah, her character was just a bit different to what I was expecting. I don't think the train scene was as good. It didn't hit me as hard as like, like I wasn't as affected. You know when yeah. you watch it and you're just like, wow, she actually really did want to go through with yeah. that. And it's just like, oh my gosh, I wasn't, it wasn't as impactful for me. And same yeah. with when he hit her. Yeah. Like, it didn't seem as impactful for me as in the first one. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, my God, you know, domestic violence sort of thing in the first one. 
mm-hmm. and the, the scenes were enough to be impactful. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but that's what I'm saying. Like, I didn't think that a few of the changes they added were as bad. Like, that's what shocked me the mm-hmm. most. I'm like, okay, you, you did your twist on it and it wasn't bad for a remake. Because mm-hmm. that's what we do. We can yeah. remakes and that's what I was looking at. Yeah. I, I, d- <laughs> I don't know. I just, because I love the original so much, I think that I went in with low expectations. Yeah, yeah, I think that... And that it exceeded my... Like, it, it kept to those low expectations. Because yeah, yeah. I was talking to my friend at work, and I'm like, oh, I'm doing fully. She's like, do you know what? The remake's not that bad. Yeah, see? And I'm but like, I think, yeah, you, you're really... It's the same with me. Like, when there's something that I really, really love, mm-hmm. and then I love the original, I just can't go into it with, an, like, a clean slate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Whereas with this one... I never really wanted to watch it. Mm-hmm. I, I knew it wasn't going to be good, but it actually, like, I just think in terms of a remake, and that's what we are looking at, mm-hmm. I think they had the right element because they say musicals are the easiest thing to remake yeah. because as long as you keep the soundtrack, you have a framework for the film. Okay, so never thought of that. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, you've got the frameworks mm-hmm. already, and it's enough that's similar for the audience to be like, yeah, this can still be called like Footloose. Mm-hmm. And so you can go through that way and make your little changes. Mm-hmm. I actually really like some of the soundtrack on this. I liked having that country ad and I love the line dancing because it just made sense. Like if you're going to go a bit more country, it just, it was nice to see that because you don't really see much country musicals, I feel. And speaking of line dancing, because I'm from, you know, Tamworth, the uh, country music capital of Australia, we lost i think only like two or three years ago lost we used to do the world's longest line dancing line and wow it now it's gone to china i think one I two years ago that. yeah I, it's my backyard i didn't even know yep that. that's crazy i know that's cool I, yeah i was in it a few times and oh. i actually do like country music i i actually really like the soundtrack i love blake shelton as a country mm-hmm. singer um really really love him mm-hmm. Didn't really like his version mm-hmm. um, of Footloose, but mm-hmm. I mean, it makes sense to have him as like he's like at the height of yeah. country music in America. I can see why you, especially mm-hmm. at that time, why you put him to do it. Um, Kenny Loggins, mm-hmm. they actually went to talk to him about this film, and he said he gave them their blessing, but he said one thing was, Why did you have to make the kids die to my song at the beginning? Mm-hmm. And I never thought of that, and I was just like, Oh my god, they did. Whereas that song was kind of pivotal throughout the rest of the film in the original. Mm-hmm. They played it right at the beginning and we witnessed the mm-hmm. car scene and it was shown straight away. So, I know. And he was like made aware of it on his first day of school. Yeah. You know? So I think that was a bit of a change. The car scene with the sheriff where he got pulled out wasn't as impactful. Like I didn't, to me as a viewer, I didn't see the stress around not listening to music and not dancing. I didn't see that. It didn't, that message wasn't strong in this film. I just, I really did not like Miles Teller as Willard. Yeah. I, I don't his mind accent him. was absolutely terrible and just, he was not believable to be like, I can't dance, I can't dance. Literally the next scene he's doing like the biggest dance ever. Like I don't know, I liked his little montage of how he was learning. I thought, you know, and especially when he was doing it with his cousins. That was and cute. And they were teaching him, like, that's so freaking cute. That was cute, but... I don't know. It's it sucks that we uh, that I feel like we ended the year on a bit of a downer because I did not like um, this one. I, I don't think it's like a bit of a downer. And I know you said you didn't like Annie McDowell. She is breathtaking. She always has been to me. And she can be, I don't know. She can be striking with her eyes and her gaze, but at the same time, she can be soft and subtle. And mm. I feel like, yeah, I think she was also an. She was an equal match to Dennis Quaid because he wasn't as harsh as John Lithgow and I think you needed to elevate her character a little bit as mm. well to balance it. And I think they balanced mm. well um, because, yeah, he, he you can see in the beginning when he votes against dancing and that he's a bit hesitant at first. And um, mm. and so, yeah, he's not already as forceful as John Lithgow. Yeah. So that's why Diane West was a bit more like placid, whereas yeah. I think these two balance each other out a bit yeah. because she can be a bit more forceful, mm-hmm. especially when he slapped her in the um in the church and she's like you need to you know you know back off sort of yeah, thing yeah i i thought they were a good match not as i, I still think john lithgow played his character way better mm-hmm. oh john lithgow to me can do no wrong um with ariel as well like i mentioned that i feel like they had to over sexualize her 
um, in this one. I don't think it was necessary. But she wasn't... Like, to me, I got the vibe that Ren liked her because she was pretty. Yeah. I didn't get the vibe that he liked her because she was an outcast like mm-hmm. he was, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So that connection, I didn't feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know her, like, boyfriend was a bit of a tool in this one, mm-hmm. but again... I think in the original, it was much more impactful when she was, like, Mm -hmm. beat up. Or even the train scene. Like, I didn't believe in this one that she wanted to stand in front of that train. Like, it just... She just seemed like she just wanted the attention because she was the preacher's daughter and didn't... And saw... And everybody saw her as the preacher's daughter. She she didn't want to be that, so she just did whatever she could to not be be known as the preacher's daughter. Yeah, yeah. And I think one scene that I actually think... um, Which... If there are fans of the this one, I don't think it worked. But when they are at the um, like the the diner, mm-hmm. and then they all start playing music and dancing, mm-hmm. it's a town where there is no dancing. How do all these kids know how to do all of that? Like I think that was a bit too unbelievable. Whereas yeah. in the original, they would go out of town, and I think that made more sense to me. Like I mean, obviously, if you know the next town over had underage drinking is legal. Mm. Of course you're going to go over there. You're yeah. not going to do it in your own town. So, no, that's right. Like, I, I thought that was just not good having the dancing. And also there. in both of them, when the uh, mechanic was like, oh, yeah, by the way, my te- my my shop's half on one side of the town yeah. and one on the other. There you go. Like, you couldn't have told them that earlier. When... I know, I know. But maybe he... Because it is a small town too, you know, and I think if anyone stirs the pot, mm. like... You could be potentially losing business. You could potentially, you know, be outcast in a mm-hmm. small town. And I don't think anyone really wants that. No. But now that I think, you know, when he sees that they are passionate mm. purely for dancing and they are doing, like, proper petitioning and mm. things like that, I think he's like, oh, okay, you know what? I can get involved in mm-hmm. this. Fun fact, you know when they clear out um, the, like, mm. air blower mm. and they put the glitter in? So when they first ordered the, like, I think it's just, like, mirror mm. shimmer pieces paper cut at Mm. certain sizes when they first ordered it it was wrong they had to reorder it and then they didn't have enough time to do the the scene Mm. so every time they did that dance scene and they like um they had to sweep it up they had to sweep it up and put it back in so by the end of filming for the day they were covered in gunk from like the floor or the dirt oh wow yeah because they had to keep sweeping it up after each shot and then they had to put it back in and then let it go oh wow wow yeah um, do you have anything else you want to say about this movie? Any stray comments or anything we might have missed? I will say one last thing. Mm-hmm. I do think, um, the story of Ren's mum, I think that is really good as well. Mm-hmm. Like how she passed away and, and, mm-hmm. and like, it was good that you slowly found out bits and pieces of that story throughout. Like mm. I was saying in the original, it was good for character development. I think that was good because it helps you understand him as a person mm. too and why he's so connected to these things mm-hmm. um, and why he feels connected to Ariel because they've both suffered loss, which mm. most people at that age mm. don't experience. No, that's right. And and like it helps you understand why he's drawn to her. But I, obviously the actors didn't execute that um, connection mm. as well as I liked, but I, I did like that element of mm-hmm. this one. Mm-hmm. Like I said before, I, I'd still prefer to watch the original. I much prefer that one, but this one wasn't as bad as I expected it to be. And I think they were able to keep the frameworks of the mm-hmm. film, add something mm-hmm. of their own element, but not stray too far from the actual story. See, the original, I could watch again and again. This one, I watched it once. I'll never watch it ever again. Yeah, I wouldn't watch it again. But... I don't think it was and as bad as I expected. No, but like my, I just think the original, it's it's a family friendly movie. Yes. Anybody can watch it. Yeah. Whereas this one, I think teenagers, are, like little kids couldn't watch this one. Yeah. It, I mean, the that. sad thing is, is that is what's happening. Sex sells. But that's also what's happening. Like even now when I see 14 year olds, I think, man, I was in the daggiest overalls. I was still playing with Barbies and playing in the dirt. Same. I was still like, like it was fun to go and build cubby houses in a freaking in the the creek near us. But like when you see a 14 year old now, like when I look at them, I'm like, man, I didn't even dress like that when I was 21. Maybe it's because we're both getting old. No, but I do feel like 
I get it. I get it. It is. It's a very. It's very different. I think that it, even for us to say, "Oh, we're very old," not that we are. Mm. I still think that is the way this the next generation mm. has gone, mm. and it would make that generation more relatable to this film, yeah. which is probably what they were trying to do. Mm. But yeah. Um, how many movie reels do you give this one? I would give it a two, two out of five. I'm giving it a one point five. Yeah. One point five because I didn't hate the final like the the dance scene when Ren was by himself. I didn't hate yeah, that. Yeah. That was good. I liked that. And, and I, I liked, liked that, that they didn't just whitewash the cast like the original. Yeah. Yeah. So I did like that. Yeah. Um, what do you think this one got on Rotten Tomatoes? I'm going to say this one got 23. So much higher. Oh, God. Please tell me it's not higher than the original. No comment. Yes, 65. Close. 69. <laughs> <laughs> the sexy um, number. You know what? When I actually was looking... So when I watched this, I was actually really shocked at how I thought, as terms of remakes go, I think they followed the pattern mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the loyalists, and it's same for me, I'd rather watch the original over mm -hmm. this one, are going to still prefer the original, but they did follow the pattern well as in terms mm -hmm. of remakes go. Mm -hmm. And the more I watched it and the more I've read about it, quite a lot of people actually, and a lot of people hated themselves for saying this, but they did prefer the, the new one. So <gasps> I can see why, after reading other people's mm -hmm. reviews, why that one got rated higher, but I would have rated the original higher yeah. myself. And we did, even with our own readings, we did that. But, yeah, if you if you go online and read people's, like, opinions of it, quite a lot of people actually rated it better. Wow. Yeah, yeah, which I was really shocked. Yeah. Yeah, same. Yeah. Like, Once is Enough for me. Mm -hmm. um, there were a few songs off the soundtrack, like country songs that I really did like, mm -hmm. and I went and listened to after I watched the film. Mm -hmm. um, I was pleasantly surprised. I think they followed the remake algorithm well. That's all I have to say. And that's, yeah. that, to be honest, that's the only reason I gave it a two is because mm -hmm. they followed that pattern well. Yeah. Just because of how bad we had this year. Yeah. And to see that someone could do it, I was just like, okay, so remakes can be done right. <laughs> yes, they can. Yeah. But it shouldn't have got that on Rotten mm -mm. Tomatoes. <laughs> mm -mm. Um, all right, so let's move on to our next segment. Nerdizons Nerdy Notables. Okay, so we've got a bit of news. So in case you haven't been aware, we have merch. So um, the awesome Craftcaster has created a design for us. Yeah, so it's on our t-shirts and things like that. So if you search Craftcaster on Redbubble, yep. it will bring up our stuff as well as her it's other stuff. Mm -hmm. I think you can even search. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can search Nerdathons on Redbubble as well, and their design will be all up there. You'll see all of their artwork. There's some amazing stuff to do. I love their little Mochi Ball t-shirt. Yeah, I might have I to buy that, that one. The other day, and I'm like, oh, I, want that. I still have to buy our merch. I know, I've been delayed. Did you, have you got it yet? No. Yeah, that's oh, what I thought. It's in the mail coming, though. Ah, so the order has been placed. I've got the chiffon top coming. Uh, I want to get um, a jumper and a shirt. Yep. Yeah. Also, we've got other news. We've got other news. A big Christmas uh, uh, present for everybody. We are now moving to fortnightly. Eee. Woo! So more pressure on us. Yes. <laughs> to have to record and edit. Uh, what we've done is we have done a um, list of Everything comparisons. So we've got. We've even had suggestions from um, board games to yep. comics to yep. movies. We've got a huge list, so Massive. we're so we're just Push going to <laughs> um, so we're just going to just randomly choose episodes, uh, and then that way every fortnight uh, you, there'll be a new episode yeah. every. <laughs> so every second Thursday we will be publishing Yay. our episodes. Taking a good podcast to listen to. Beautiful. Blend. Exactly. So January we are doing yep. the um we're doing one of Andrew's choices, which yep. is Fright Night, the oh. original, one of my absolute all time faves. And exactly what you said about Footloose, I have a feeling I'm gonna have the same mm. 
notion with the remake Spoilers. on their side. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so we're doing Fright Night, the original. And then we're also doing Bill and Ted. And that is more of a delayed sequel to the original, mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. which we've done in the past. So Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to everybody. Make sure you all stay safe. Stay safe and we will be back to you in the new year. Bye. Bye. Bye.